want a wake. He didn't want a funeral. He's like, I know this kid's here, but fuck that. I don't, I don't want. He's like, he's like, no way. Uh uh. So then we said, hey, we want to do something for us. It's not about you, it's about us. So we really don't give a shit what you want. We're going to do something so you can pick from the following options. But really, when we started talking about it, you saw him kind of light up. And I, I know for a fact that this was his goal. And that's what he wanted. That was what he did. His main goal was to get people together, to have a good time, whether it was family or friends. And if you were in the room, you were his favorite. I said, number one son. But guess what? Everybody in here is number one because there's no way that he made you feel like subpar. That's my dad. And please, if you have a story that you didn't get to tell today or you want to retell, please use Facebook because I, I, I love reading them. Everybody, we'd go back and forth with the texts going, did you read that? Did you see what he wrote? I feel I had personally contributed to both my brothers being so physically fit when they were younger. They always played baseball, went sledding, ice skating, etc. at Mack Park. And every so often I would join them. And inevitably something that <clears throat> like getting the wind knocked out of me as I sledded down the big hill would occur. And Dick or Bill, and sometimes both of them, would have to pull me home on the sled for Kay to triage me. <clears throat> they would throw buckets of water out the um, window on the second floor to hit my dates just to see how they would react. <laughs> you couldn't know Dick without knowing how important his family was to him. They were his world. When Dick loved you, he did it unconditionally. So many times we would talk and I'd be overly concerned about something and he'd bring it to perspective so quickly with the words, but we've got great kids. And of course, I'd get the message that nothing else matters as much as that. He was so proud of the job he and Lucy did in raising Scott and Lisa. He loved his girl, Cynthia, and someone said, who is Cynthia? I thought you had a girlfriend. No, <laughs> Cynthia is Scott's wife. <laughs> and knew David was the one for Lisa. He was so proud of Emma, Boston, and Leilani. He enjoyed every one of his nieces and nephews. Everyone felt special being with Dickie because you were special to him. So to each of you who spent time with my brother and felt special, listen to his greeting, our favorite greeting once again. Yo, baby, it's me. Raise your glass and toast. Yo, baby, it's me. I always brought my own heckler. <laughs> I'd get the mic and I'd hear, stand up. <laughs> Not that funny. <laughs> then I would, or if I'd say, welcome my friends out here. You don't have any friends. <laughs> And that was my buddy, Dickie. Now you can see by this turnout, this is a great tribute. And Dickie deserves it. I mean, he, he fought, he fought, and he, he fought a nine year battle. Courageous is not accurate enough for the battle he fought. But he had, he had lots of help. He did not, he did not do this alone.